everybody welcome to shepherd's corner your favorite show on a thursday evening or sunday morning or on a tuesday if you're driving in your car and you're listening on the radio this is his grace the archbishop having a conversation with us and over the last couple of weeks we've been journeying and talking all about the domestic church how important the domestic church is in society as well as in our parishes and so Archbishop Jason Gordon is continuing with his catechesis on the domestic church. Now, I want to remind you all at the very beginning, pick up your Catholic news. You, you can pick it up in your parish. You can pick it up in your supermarkets. You can pick it up in your pharmacies. You can order it. We will deliver. Pick up your Catholic news. And you'll be able to journey and to conversate with Archbishop J and to send your comments in. You know you could go to catholicttt.org and you can send your comments in. You can even, even email him on any queries that you have. Welcome, Archbishop Jason Gordon. Welcome to Shepherd's Corner. And you are in your corner. How are you doing, sir? And I'm happy you're in your, your corner. And I hope, I hope you know your rights. <laughs> well, that's what it's all about, knowing your rights. Now, all right. What are our rights? as the domestic church. What are our rights? Well, boy, that's a real serious thing, you know. The modern child knows all about their rights, huh? You ask any five-year-old child, they could tell you what their rights are. But that's R-I-G-H-T-S. But very few of our children know their rights, R-I-T-S, the rituals that we do that hold families together and that allow families to experience their connectivity, their bonds, their love, their celebrations. And somehow or the other, in the last two decades or so, many families have let go of their rights, R-I-T-S, and gone to their rights, R-I-G-H-T-S. And so everybody now is an expert in what I supposed to get, but nobody's an expert anymore in what I'm supposed to get and how I'm supposed to participate. And that's two very different directions in society. And, and because people are becoming experts in how I, what I supposed to get, people are not really understanding that rights, obligations, are one part of the equation, but rights as rituals, that's the stuff that make families families. And so we're saying, Catholic family, know your right. Well, you know, these days, everything is about rights, eh? But R-I-G-H-T-S, yeah. everybody yeah. is about rights. It's my right to do this, my right to do that. But as you say, we've forgotten all about the R-I-T-E-S. And, 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 you know, I think that after reading the article and seeing in the direction that you're going, I too can confess, you know, that... <coughs> We've seen, the, the, even in my family, some of these rights getting watered up. You know, we live in a culture where everybody wants to constantly reinvent themselves. And, and we live in a culture where we believe that if we do one thing twice the same way, somehow it's, it, it's stale. We, we need to have an experience. So that means everything had to be fresh and brand new. But what we don't understand is that is the level of pressure it puts on to the family to, to constantly going after the brand new. The, the, when, we, when we do that, we really don't get the depth. You see, what we want to do is reinvent ourselves constantly. And, and with these new and unique experiences, what we let go of is the tried and the tested. 
And what we lo- let go of is the depth that holds us. Because that's what rituals and rites do. They hold us and they configure us in a particular way. And they give us something that we could trust in. As opposed to every single time is a brand new experience that does not connect to the last time and does not take us forward to the next time. And, and that's really where the challenge, the challenge that we're facing as families right now. I can also say that sometimes we pick up some rights that ain't, that ain't right at all. You know? Some wrongs. <laughs> some wrongs. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the wrong rights we pick up, you know, mm. and it, it affects it affects the, the stability of the family. Um, Absolutely. It affects the way the family communicates and so on. So you said good rites and rituals lead to good values. Expound on that. Well, you see, when you, when you have good rites, they communicate something deeper than the, than the right itself. They they communicate a whole value system and deeper than that, a whole worldview. And deeper than that, that which you can trust. So for instance, let's just take a meal, simple thing, Um, a Sunday meal. If from the time the children were knee high, they know that the Sunday meal is a time when the family gets together. And that that's a non-negotiable. And that not only do we get together, but we have, we have some special food, um, we dress up for it, and uh, we sit around the table, and that's the time when we share and we love each other and we experience each other's family. And it's, it's, it's more than just a grabbing of a food. If we, if we know that from young, then when the children have many things pulling them in different directions, they know they have to plan around the Sunday meal because they know that is a non-negotiable. But when the Sunday meal is constantly a negotiable, it, it is here, it is there, it happens sometimes, it don't happen sometimes, it's on and off. When the children start pulling and tugging, there's nothing to hold it. And when there's nothing to hold it, what happens next? is you, you could find yourself living in a household where Monday to Sunday, you're seeing people, but you're not connecting with them. You're, you're living in the same space, but there's nothing else happening. And that they come in and they go in, but you know, it's as, it's as if it is a motel that all you're living in, because people just check in and out. They have a pot on the, on the, on the stove, but, but, but there's no human interaction. That's a family, that did not have rights at the beginning. And because they didn't have rights at the beginning, what happened is the family then got pulled to pieces as each member of the family grew up a little bit and everybody has competing demands. There's nothing to hold the whole together anymore. I just, you know, I was reading your article and one of the things that um, you spoke about is that we used to have the right of the meal time. Remember when everybody got dressed up every day and sat at the table? Now, hold on. You said got dressed up every day. You know, every day. I remember day. that. Yeah. And sat at the, listen, God rest my father's soul. The last time I, we all got a cocktail from him, the three boys, three out of the five boys got a cocktail from him <laughs> because, well, I don't know about what the ritual was in your house, but it was plenty to us. So mommy, when dinner was ready, Mommy would ring a bell. Wherever you were, you were stop dead. Stop whatever you're doing. Turn. Turn. Dress properly because if you're outside running, kicking ball or whatever it is. Wherever it is. Dress properly and come to the table. Correct. Daddy sat in his spot. Not in in any other spot. Absolutely. Well, boy, the three of us were in the back cleaning an aquarium. Mommy rang the bell and we remained cleaning the aquarium. And the next thing that we knew was my father. The bell was ringing on your head. <laughs> <laughs> For whom the bell tolled. For whom the bell tolled. And men were scrambling. <laughs> it told for thee. You see, good rites and ritual lead to good values and harmonious living. 
bad rites and, and rituals create the opposite. We used to have a time in, in when the, the rite was, was held together and it would hold the whole family together. And because of that, we connected with one another and it was all about relationships and the relationship in the family. So what your family had was a good right around a mealtime. So first, you knew when it was, a bell would ring. Second, you knew the expectation. When the bell rang, it told for thee. <laughs> Third, you stop what you're doing. Fourth, you went, you dressed yourself properly. You didn't scramble onto the table however you happened to be. And you prepared yourself for the meal. Correct is right. <laughs> and what happened in the meal time? And at the meal time, well, I'll tell you, mommy made sure that daddy was served first. So daddy was served first. So if daddy wanted the drumstick, he got the drumstick. And then, of course, everybody else was served after. Um, amazing thing. And mommy always ate last. So mommy yes. would ensure that everybody got food and she would get food last. Then we said the prayer. We said grace before me is bless us, O oh Lord, and these mm -hmm. things. You know, you know it. We prayed before and after. Yes. And you couldn't leave the table until everybody was finished. And at the Correct. table, we were conversating. Correct. And you couldn't get up from the table unless you finished all your food. Green vegetables and all. We know that. <laughs> Green vegetables, everything. But you see, the right held the family together. If every time you had a mealtime, everything was totally different, you wouldn't know what to expect. You wouldn't then prepare yourself for it. You wouldn't come to the table with a mindset and a frame that will hold you. So those are, that's what rites and rituals do. And that's why they're so important. And that's why family needs to have rights around relationships, around prayer, and, and around all kinds of things. But we see that just now. <laughs> you see, you know, you say something here. You see, that, eh? go ahead. No, you I see it. You say something here that, that, that I'm seeing more and more. You know, everybody going to the pot to serve themselves. It's not no longer mummy. Everybody's no. on the table with all the food on the table, placemats, your knives and forks, and you learn to eat properly. Coaster, you, coaster, what do you mean? A, little, a little serviette. Knife on the right, fork on the left, and you learned your table manners also. At the and, it, table. And, it, and while you were talking, you didn't have knife and fork in your hand gesticulated either. Hold on. You can't talk with your mouth full either. <laughs> Correct. So you had to put your knife and fork down. Make sure and swallow, and then you talk. Correct. But we've lost all of that, eh? eh? Yes, we've lost. We've lost so much of it. All of we've lost things. so much of it. All of these. So things. you're going to say, read the next line from Anna. <laughs> Every yeah, we were talking about the pot, you know. Yeah. At what? So the whole thing is, you know. People ate by themselves. People are eating by themselves now. I find you're you know, dodging my line, pot. you know. <laughs> <laughs> you're dodging my line, you know. I'm not sure why, you know. <laughs> Let me read it then. Today, everyone goes to the pot, serves themselves, and eats by themselves. What do these mealtime rites convey? One conveyed a sense of family, togetherness. We belong to each other. We love each other. We will hold each other. We are there for each other. And the other one conveys is me, myself, and I. And, and, and that shift in the family right, that has created great havoc for, for many of our people. Totally agree with you. Um, it has created havoc because we become individuals. It's no longer the family. It's what, what was important to me, you know? Correct. And therefore, we don't surrender our what we would like to do for the greater good of the whole family. Correct. Absolutely. And, and so it's me first and everybody else after. So know your rights. R-I-T, yes. 
there's a guy called um, Terence Lovat that has proposed that a right has five stages: entry, preparation, climax, celebration, and return. So if we take your um, your your dinner table experience, the bell that is the entry, eh? <laughs> correct? Correct. Then the next stage is all the kids are getting dressed as preparation. Mom is setting the table, and I'm sure some children are helping mom set table. So that's that's the second stage, that's the, pre the the preparation phase. Then everybody sits around the table, and and each shares, conversates. That's the climax, and then and the celebration, and then after the climax and the celebration, so you have the eating of the food, and then the talking after the food has been eaten where you get into deeper and deeper conversation, that's the celebration, and then you end by a prayer again, and you return into normal, normal living. Now, these, these five stages are important, entry, preparation, climax, celebration, and return. And, and if you understand what a rite does, because it has an entry, a bell rings, a preparation, people get dressed. A, a, a climax, grace, and eat. A celebration, speaking, sharing, laughing, and engaging. And then a return back into ordinary activity where you now jump back into whatever it is you're doing and continue on with your life. But the pause that the ritual causes is vital for the family to have experienced a moment where the family is more important than any individual there. That takes sacrifice because mom spent great time and energy to ensure that the meal was appropriate and that the family gathered and was able to celebrate this moment and this time together. Why? You look at these things slighter. We can't. You know, but you know the way the way Terence Lovat put it, you know, and and you just said, but Derek, you know what you all used to do, you know, the bell would ring, and I think that a lot of families had this same sort of ritual, yes, for meals and so on. Yeah, but when you throw out baby and bath water, what happens is nothing holds the whole together anymore. And so the children from three, four, and five years old learn that there is, there is no whole. There's just me. And so how do the children act? They act as if it's only me. And so how do they grow up? They grow up as if it's only me. Now, when the food was passing around, and I would imagine it would go from the eldest down to the youngest, and I would imagine mom would be last. Yes. Okay. Now, if the eldest decided to take four pieces of chicken. <laughs> that could work. Whoa. <laughs> that couldn't work. It could not work. Because the family also learned around that table solidarity. It's not only about you, but all of us have to get. So you might have your preference, but you can't take three and four pieces because all of us need to get. And, and so even the subtlety of solidarity is being taught right there on the, on the dining room table. Eh? This, this, this subtlety of hierarchy, that there, are, that, that there are stages of growth and development that you have to honor. And, and therefore, the, the, the older ones would get a, a, a first preference over the younger ones. There are all kinds of things that, have been, that were taught in a right that is far more than the food that we eat. The food nourishes our body, but the right nourishes our soul, our connectivity, our sense of self, and who we are in the world. And, the, and, and, and having family rights is absolutely essential if you're going to give kids a real sense of who they are in the world. You know, you, 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 you know, one of the, 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 the things that, that, that Lovat shared too was, you know, that part where we all had a conversation, we all spoke, we all shared what 
what occurred in the day for us, what was, you know, what, 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 was our, what were our joys, what were our sorrows, and the family, mm -hmm. got, the family got, got to hear, you know? It got to hear what your experience was. Boy, you know, exactly. I, boy, I, 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 I demand bokey whole time, boy. You know what I mean? I want the pitching. I come home with my whole sack of marbles. Or, boy, I get bowl for duck. You know, that kind, all of those things were shared. You know? Correct. And, and in, in this sharing, each person got to know more and more about each other, about their day, and, uh, and to help celebrate that day or that week. And, and so the right, I want to say, is more than the physical food. The right actually held the whole family together in a, in a relationship that every time that bell rang, you learned more and more about your family, but you also learned your place in the family and you also learned boundaries. Yes. That day with the aquarium, it was boundaries with it. <laughs> that fish and that aquarium and cleaning it was very important, but not more important than the bell that rang that summoned you to dinner. So you're learning boundaries too, huh? Learning boundaries and also what was, what was more important? It was the family connecting. It's the family yes. ritual. Yes. That is more important. And, and, and that structures the relationships. And, and that family right, or the family rights that we have, that's vital for healthy living for families. And especially in a COVID time, we have to have those rights very clear for our children. And if you have young children and everybody home, and you home too, and things are all kind of dismal, we have to set up rights so that you wake up at a certain time in the morning. You, you have prayer together. You, you then you have a, a, a breakfast together and get everybody's now ready for school together and work together. So you, 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 put, a, you put the rights in it so you don't let a child skate from bed into the class because they can. You don't do that. Because that, that helps the child or, or hinders the child from real socialization. So you, you, you make rights, you put your rights in place so that the children have things that hold them. And then it's no longer you trying to hold every child. The rights hold all of them together. The, the problem with the modern family is that mom or dad or mom and dad have to try and hold each child individually. That's because they haven't created rights that hold the whole. Like you see that bell? Hmm. When that bell ring? <laughs> Everybody know what o'clock it is. Correct. Like, like I, I remember as, as a child, when I was old enough, the other park right next to where I live, and, and it was a simple rule. You could go to the park, but come home before the street lights light. <laughs> So you're watching them, you're flying a kite, eh? and you're watching that street light boy, and you say, eh, eh, don't light yet, you know, don't light yet. <laughs> <laughs> or you're pitching your marbles, and you say, don't light yet, you know, don't light yet. So it wasn't my mother or my father had to come to tell me what time it was. We all knew as children, when you see that street light light, you could be in the middle of marbles, in the middle of kiting, whatever it is. Your dung tools and everybody resource. You just see everybody leave the same time. And again, that's the value of common ritual between families because we all had the same message. Now, if some had to come home when the street light light and some could stay on after that and others could do anything they want, then it doesn't hold easily. And an individual family then has to put a lot more pressure on their children to respond in a particular way. But when the community has the same ritual that you see that street light, when that street light light, make sure you find yourself home. The whole community that operates in a particular way. And, and, and it holds 
And, and the problem with the modern family is the incredible pressure a parent feels for the individual decision on the individual things that is required for every individual child is too much on any human being. If you had proper rights, you would hold those children, you would grow them up with the rights, and the rights will hold the whole together, and you would have to expend far less energy than, than you now do. And this, I want everybody to, to, to listen to where Archbishop is taking us. We're talking about this domestic family now, and how critical we are seeing that the rights in the domestic family are and not only in your family, but in all families, because he shared with us, street lights go on is not only my family. And I'm quite sure that you all would have heard this. Some of the older folks would have heard this. I heard it, you know, Derek, what are you doing outside? You know what I mean? You don't see the lights going on and this is a neighbor. So this is not exactly. this one. This is not not in your, your parent even had to say nothing. Any neighbor pass by, any adult pass by, boy, how come you out? Wait, street light on and you out? That's trouble. Correct. So therefore, but the, whole, the whole community held it. So there was far less pressure on the individual parent. Eh? Far less. Because the community reinforced the same rights. Yep. The, the, <laughs> the community. No. The community. And listen, I'm I, I saying this outright. I got community licks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fighting, Adiana, fighting in Adiana. a park. I, I, I get licks from my neighbor. And not only that, by the time I reach home, I heard the story and I get some more licks. Yeah, Uncle Derek, because Derek was not a very good boy, I got a <laughs> lot of licks. Just letting you know. <laughs> but the thing is, and the way it worked is, when you reach home, it's two sets of licks you're getting. One, because you had to do something wrong if Mr. So-and-so had to correct you in public. And two, how you could dare shame our family for. So take this too. <laughs> but the, the point is, there was far less pressure on the individual child, the individual family, and the individual parent. Because they were, the rights held the whole together. I don't know if you realize there's a rise in depression and suicide through, um, thoughts in our children. Eh? And uh, I think it's, it's connected to the lack of healthy life-giving rights. I think so. Because when a child is left to invent their day entirely on their own, they could wake up when they want, they could do what they want. There's no structure, there's no order, and there's nothing that gives them a sense of definition. That's having no container. And, and that's not an easy thing for a child to deal with. The, the, the one thing every child hits against, but needs most desperately, is boundaries that contain them. They hit against it, but they need it desperately. And when we don't give the, the boundaries, then what happens is the child has experiences depression, they have thoughts, they have suicidal thoughts, they start cutting themselves, they start doing all kinds of things. And, and I'm not saying this is the only reason, but I, but I believe that the, the, the letting go of the rights, of the rituals, of the family holding the whole has put so much pressure on individual parents that the individual parents give way under the pressure of the children and they're aided and abetted by so much foolishness on television. Because the television gives them all these foolish ideas about who their, their parents are really idiots, who are born in another generation, who don't understand them. And, and the, the, the media feed them with a lot of rubbish. And so even the rights around television. I mean, I remember being in my, my sister's um, family and the youngest was wanted to go downstairs to watch TV. The TV was downstairs. And said, Mama, we're now to watch um, cartoons. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And he said, what is it you're going to watch? He said, cartoons. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. What cartoons are you going to watch? And then he, he said, what cartoons are you going to, going to watch? And my sister said, OK, go ahead. So I said, but I ain't get this. It's cartoons the man watching. What happened? He said, you don't understand. They have cartoons and cartoons these days, you know. Not all cartoons is cartoons, eh? 
Another alcohol cartoons is child play. But the point is to go to the television set, there was a ritual. So it wasn't now and again it happened. Anytime he was going to the television set, he had to say that he was going and he had to say what he was going to watch. So in other words, you're not going to sit down there for the day. You're going for something specific. When it's done, you come back. And, and those rituals held the family. You know, I, I believe that, the, that when, when we don't have rituals holding the family, we have big, dark emotions floating around the place and, and nothing to contain those dark emotions and nothing to help with it. And I, I, as I say, I know there are many other reasons for, for depression, suicidal thoughts, um, self-hurt and so on. I know there are many others. But I, I do believe that the, the family being held in ritual is an important part of the, of the, the process. And, and families thrive with rituals. Eh? The, I want to say that mm -hmm. because I, I see it in my own family. We thrive when there is a ritual. You know that you have to get up by a specific time. You know that we say the family prayer. We say good morning prayer first. Then you know you go brush your teeth, you dress for clothes. Mommy is... Mommy is normally organizing she's up first so therefore breakfast was ready everybody came and sat at the table you had breakfast you know so there's a ritual and that held the whole yes and, and and that stands for a lifetime because you also because you've learned that ritual you also pass that on to your families correct correct and and i don't think i think we we've gone through a generation that has thrown baby and bath water out. And for, for a generation, oh God, boring, the same thing over, boring, because everybody wanted excitement. But the problem with excitement is that it doesn't hold the whole together. And the problem with the excitement is that it, it doesn't give people a, a, a focus, a connection, boundaries, and a way of, of relating with each other. So many families have thrown out baby and bathwater. And I don't think that this strengthens the family. I think it weakens it considerably. And that's why the Assistant Family Life Commission is proposing that families focus on three rights. Relationship, rituals, and reaching out. Say that with me. Relationship, rituals, rituals, and reaching out. And reaching out. Now, I want everybody listening on to the Shepherd's Corner conversations with Archbishop G. This is why we're asking you all, he's been asking everybody, pick up your Catholic news. I mean, this is a source for all of us, you know, mm. as a, a source of teaching. You know, the word, you get so many good articles inside there, so many good teachings, you get homilies inside there for the Sunday, you know what I mean, so that you can prepare, make that a ritual, make that a rite in your family. Yep. Yep, because that's even to another good right is preparing for mass before the before the mass. But we'll get to some of those just now. So when we look at the rights of relationships, you know we are people of habit and and, and of ritual. You know, think on your morning ritual. You probably do the same things in the same order every day. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, I do. And if you're, if you're morning... Yeah. I wake up, my typical morning, you know, I wake up early. Normally, I would get up before Camille and I would take off my rosary and I would, go at, I would go and take a walk while I'm praying the rosary with my plants. Check on my plants, make sure that my plants... You, know, you know the plants, the seedlings are passed for you? Right, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're doing good, eh? They're doing real good. So I would go and check on my plants, that kind of thing, while I'm praying the rosary and take a walk and meditate. And then I'll come back and meet Camille after. By that time, she would be up. You know, so, but that's my ritual every morning. All right. Now, there are some people whose ritual is as soon as they get up, you look at your phone. <laughs> and, and you start to answer WhatsApps. And you start to answer emails. You ain't talk to God yet, you know. You ain't talk to God for a morning or for nothing yet, you know. 
you start you start off those are bad rights because what they do is they throw us into the hyperactivity as opposed to pulling us into the depth of our soul so each each morning we have a right we have a ritual that we do and, and we do it the same way every time and that's the power of ritual we we do we don't plan it it just flows and it, and it gives meaning and structure to the way we live if you think of even a simple thing like brushing your teeth you know you do it the same way over and over and over the same way um there there, there, there are things that we do and and they become so so habitual that that we don't have to ask ourselves if we've done it we just we just keep doing it and and that's the power of a right it it becomes habit and because it becomes habit it holds us into a rhythm and into sequencing and into things that are important for ourselves for our day because if, if you don't have a ritual around brushing your teeth and you start going out in public and you have brush your teeth yet oh gosh lord help everybody <laughs> But that's why rites and rituals are important. And, and what they do is they structure our relationships. And I, I really want to, to stress that. They structure the relationships. So our families have many, many rituals, conscious and unconscious. And some of them are good and others are destructive. We need to look critically at all of our rituals and we need to evaluate them. And we need to ask, what are the rituals that we need to hold on to and strengthen? What's the ones we need to discard of? And what are the new ones we should be taking up? Don't try to take up everything in one day. No. Take up one at a time, strengthen one or two, work on them piece by piece, make a list of the ones you want ultimately. But if you try to do it all in one day, you will have overkill. And it, it is not going to work for you. You have to understand the rhythm and introduce it little by little as you go along. In, I, I want to see, I just want to reflect, you know, Joshua and I were talking about this ritual about me waking up in the morning and picking up the rosary. Yeah. And he is in full yeah. on. And, he, and, and I say, you know, I watch you and I see you doing the same thing, you know. And he said, Daddy, you know, I, I think better when I'm doing that, you know, even while you're praying the rosary, you, you know, you're thinking you know your your, your meditating mm -hmm. on the mysteries and our lord speaks to us while we're praying yep absolutely and and that's why for me the first moments in a day it has to be forgotten it has to be forgotten so i i really don't like to do nothing before i do my prayer and um you know these days i'm doing mass every day on television so I do my, my prayer, and part of that is my meditation on scripture. Part of that is my, my reflection on the passage. Part of that is my beating up with God about what he really wants me to say on this passage. And part of that is my silence, where I just go into silence with him and rest in him and allow him to rest in me. And, and that as a beginning of a day is so important. Because if that's how the day begins, the whole day is punctuated with grace. The whole day. When the day starts with an iPhone and a, and a, and a WhatsApp and an email and a this and a that and a the next, the whole day is just about work and just about the, the mundane and the ordinary and, and the efficient. It's not about the soul. It's not about beauty. It's not about, about depth. It's not about God. You see, in our families, you, you, you brought us back into the celebrate birthdays, which tell individuals they value them special. Mm -hmm. Families develop rituals around these celebrations. What you eat, how you dress, the presents you give, they all add significance to that celebration of the birthday. Yep. And, and the, thing, the nice thing with a family is this, that, you know, your birthday is coming, and you know how the family celebrates it. And that's important. And you know that the family will celebrate it. That's important. For, for kids where the parents even forget it's a birthday, they have no ritual, nothing they're holding. Um, the day come, the day gone. Those kids hold an incredible amount of emotion. Because for them, 
Am I really special? Does anybody really love me? All of those kind of funny questions start emerging. And those funny questions create challenge. And, and that challenge creates a, a whole other dynamic. So the family rituals around important things like birthdays and anniversaries and so, I mean, you, you described an, a, a really interesting one that, that around every birthday, your cook and the children come. Yeah. So for your, birth, for your birthday and Camille birthday, what happens? We cook and the children come. <laughs> <laughs> No, but actually, the, 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 the children now, they're, they're no longer children, they're young adults. And I must yeah. say, by seeing daddy and mommy cook, they're all good cooks. So, right. but most of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> they would all get together and say, daddy, we'll cook. You know, it's just whatever. But let mommy, there's mommy lime. And I will get in the kitchen with Sophie or Joshua or something like that. And we will cook. And then it will be mommy's celebration. And all the, all the other children and everybody will come around. But yeah, okay. birthdays are special. And, and the ritual around celebrating them is so important. It is. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I keep saying, know your rights. Know your rights. Because without knowing your rights, what happens is things, things start to fail. So what are the other occasions that you celebrate as a, as a family? Things like Christmas, Easter, anniversaries. One of the ways in which we celebrate this, do we plan them? Do you ever involve the children in the planning of it? Or is it all planned for the children? Because when they become old enough, they should be involved in it. And they should participate in the preparation of it. And they should, everybody should have a, a role and a place in it. And that's how everybody has a role and a place in the family. And, and that's how the whole family starts learning how to work together, how to give and take with each other. All of those things, I think, are, are very important. I think it's important that there is participation. It's also important that over the years, people come to know what to expect. And this gives a, a sense of a container for the emotions and for the relationships. I think these are important things. You know that Christmas is one of the most emotional times for many families? Yeah especially families who have loved, lost loved ones. And, and if they don't have strong rituals that held them before, well, well you fall to pieces during the family. During, and then each individual is left to their own grief. But if you had strong rituals before, then those strong rituals continue to hold. And because they continue to hold, the person is not left to find a way to deal with their grief. The, the ritual holds them even in that difficult time. Yeah, I, I, so, Catholic family, know your rights. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Know your rights. Uh, you, you, you spoke about, I love what you, how you brought that into, you know, maybe losing the matriarch or the patriarch. Uh, but family rituals for us, Christmas, yeah. daddy would, we would all go home by the parents. And everyone yeah. would bring their bag of gifts that they were giving to the other siblings, right? The Correct. Other siblings and their children. And daddy will then hand out the gifts to everybody, you know? Okay. So he would then pull, he would pull the Derek bag, the Roger bag, the Dominic bag, the Gregory bag. And it's plenty of us, eh? <laughs> then he would just hand out. He says, ah, this one is for Joshua. This is for Gabby. This is for Daniela. Now, when daddy died, mommy took over that role. Right. You know, so there's where you were talking about. So therefore, there was the whole holding together of the family. The Correct. The ritual continue. The right continue. Correct. And then one day you wake up and you realize, but wait, I is daddy? <laughs> you wake up and realize that, right? Yeah. I am the one who have to hold the whole together. And it's so important. It really is, is important. So they also have some other significant times um, when we do, we do different celebrations. Puberty, reaching the age of 16 and 21. Those are important times in the, in the life of, um, of, of, of families. In addition to letting the child know that he or he is loved in a special way. They also allow each one to learn their place and the place of ritual and gives the individual a sense of being cared for so that there is no need for anxiety and 
uh, you know, it go work and not going to work, they're going to remember me and they're not going to, no, no, no. We know this thing going to happen and we could trust it. And therefore, we could, we could get on to celebrating as opposed to living with a lot of anxiety. Many kids live with a lot of anxiety when their birthday is coming, when, when Christmas is coming, because they don't know what to expect anymore. One year something might happen, another year nothing might happen. But, but that lack of ritual creates anxiety. Ritual contains, and, and I'm, I'm proposing that families really should be knowing their rights and living their rights. Your next step is rituals have meaning. Ceremonies Absolutely. connect members to the family, to one another. Absolutely. And to the wider world, eh? And to the wider world. And I, I believe that we need to rediscover the importance of various rituals, ceremonies, rites, rites of passage in our lives. You, you see the, the right of a child going to school for the first time? We need a ritual for that. Because yeah. plenty of children scarred for life because of it. Moving from primary to secondary school, we need a, we need a right for that. We, we, need, we need these rights that will hold children and help them through the different stages of their life and give them a focus and a, a direction of where they need to be going. I, I, um, I mean, I remember, you know, my children moving from primary to secondary, that's a huge, huge thing. You know, absolutely. I mean, they're going in a big school, you know, that kind of thing. They leave, you've left a lot of your friends behind and you grew Correct. up for five or six years in primary school because, Correct. you know, some of your primary schools were co ed, so you had boys and girls, and, but they go into different schools now. And you come in into this massive school with big people, and you are the smallest one where you just left a school where you are the big boy. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I remember I, I was going to Mr. Romilly's primary school in Anna Street. If they had 60 children in the school, they had plenty. Yeah? <laughs> so when I went into Fatima College and these hundreds of kids, it, it was daunting for the first weeks. It was really daunting. But know your rights. Know your rights. So how do we help families with their rights so that the families do and move through their their time well and and allow the the the, the growing up to be done because the rights hold the whole together we need to live more to let them more fully and to be open to re-examine our present rituals to deepen them and to adopt new ones as needed the purpose of the rights and the ritual is all about relationship. It's all about relationship. And if the ritual is everybody, when they come home, gone in the pot, um, take out a, a, a plate of food, gone in their room, or gone by the TV, eat a plate of food, and dive into something for the rest of the day, and nobody and talk to nobody, then it's not a great right. It's actually a very bad right. It's about individualism, it's about selfishness, it's about we need to find ways every week to connect the families. You know many families who live far from, from school travel long hours every day. And, and just to introduce in that long travel a family rosary on one of the journeys, either to or fro, and, and a morning prayer or evening prayer, or morning and an evening prayer. So the part of the journey is held together with us together in the car doing something together. Because you know the rest of the journey, everybody have their own earphones in their head, eh? And everybody doing whatever else it is they're doing by themselves. You know, I know that, that um, some families, one of the rituals is once all the kids in the car, how was your day? Because I want to have to get home, and no joking. So when people get home, the energy is low. But we have an hour and a half, so how was your day? And, and so the ritual is that everybody shares on their day, and they laugh, and they talk, they connect, and so on. And then they can go on to do other things after that. So depending on what your circumstances, you need to understand what are your rights. You need to know your rights. You talked about right of rituals, work 
simply talk and pray. Uh -huh. Building consistent and dependable rituals gives us a container for the psychic energy around these human activities. I want to go back and see it again. The right of rituals, work, play, talk, and pray. Expound on that. You see, those, those rights, the right of work, do, you know, it's so easy that a family could come down to mommy working and everybody has loafing up and cleaning a room. If there was a good ritual around cleaning a room, there'd be far less stress in the family. Yeah? Far less. Homework on an evening. If there was a ritual where you come home, you got a little something to eat, you either took a little play or you took a little sleep, you did your homework, and then you got time to do other things, then there'll be far less stress around it. But when it is every day is different and, and it's, it's not being held well, then we have, a, we have a, little, a little trouble because it means that every day we have to reinvent how we're going to do this one. And it shouldn't be that way. It should be set. It should be ritualized. And everybody should know what to expect up front. You see, does everyone in the family have a chore that contributes to the whole? And, and that's important. As a child, I had a chore. I, I used to have to, when I was old enough, um, do the lawn or the dog or something in the house and then the, wash the car. There was always a chore that I had to do from, from very young. And, and, and that chore taught me that I had to make a contribution back to this, to this house. It was not only about my mother or my father contributing. I had to contribute back to the house too. And so the, con the, the ritual of work is an important one. And, and don't be afraid to have the children washing up after the meal. Why, why is it that mom cooks the meal and after mom must wash up too? That, that's not right. But, you know, sometimes we slip into bad habits. And, and rather than have everyone participating, everybody comes, grabs, and runs. No, 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 no. The right holds. So if the right and ritual in the house is that those who, those who cook, door washer for instance then you know how to how it works but as soon as a child is old enough they need to participate in preparation in cleaning up and in 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 putting things together otherwise what happens is we have a pile of entitled children who believe that the world owes them everything and they don't see what they need to contribute back to the world and that's a problem that we have in our society today you already spoke about homework. Is there a ritual? You know, come home, eat, play, then yeah. do homework. If not, there will be a constant fight to contain the energy and the desire to just simply play. And it's important for them to know that. I mean, I used to put up a list on the bathroom door. Gabrielle, this is your job. Heidi, this is your job. You scrub in the bathroom. This one, you sweep in the top floor. You're, they all knew what they were supposed to do. You know? Okay. Washing up. And it's Gabby, important. Washing up on a Monday, Heidi, you are washing up on a Tuesday, Joshua, you're putting away the ways on a Monday, Sophie, you're putting away the ways. They had a chore. And that's how they know that they're participating in the family. That's how they know. You see, the constant fight is what you want to get out of. Does your family have a ritual of leisure and relaxation? Is there something that when you're growing up as a family that you all have? We, we, had, a, we had a ritual of, of, of relaxation. On a weekend, we would usually go by the sea. So at some stage, at, you know, either the Saturday or the Sunday, or sometimes both. Sometimes we would do an overnight um, down the islands. But there was always a, a, a ritual around relaxation and leisure. Or, or sometimes we would go and visit um, one, of our, one of my uncles. And um, the children would be playing, the adults would be talking. And, but there are things that we did that made, that, that made the thing work well. Do you know? And that was magical for us as a family. Eh? The, 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 the leisure together was magical as a family. Yeah, I mean, we knew that on, on, on over holidays, 
you know, at least one week we're going to spend by the beach. So everybody yeah. looked forward to that. So that, that was yeah. part of leisure. Um, Camille was kind of a little rigid. There was no watching of television except news during the week. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you could watch television. <laughs> you could read books, but there was no television. You know, until the children... You could lime, you could play, you could be, play yeah. cards, you could do things together. And, and that's good. And, and that's where the ritual holds. You see, like when we were going to, on a weekend, you know, the night before we would prepare and we decide which mass you're going, because what time you want to leave, we determine which mass you're going to. And then mom would cook and we would decide on our departure time and what we needed for the journey. And, and so by the time, you know, the Sunday came, it was a Sunday we were going and we went to mass and we had breakfast. We knew what we were doing. We headed out. And, and so when the journey ended at the end of the day, you know, we re-entered into a real world and we were mentally prepared for the next day because we had prepared for it. We entered into it. We had, we had this incredible day together. We came back home. We did all our preparations and we're ready for the next day for school. Yeah. That's important. The children have a sense of rhythm and a sense of, of, of ritual about even things like relaxation. You spoke about the ritual of talk molded us together as a family. You, you, yeah. You're now guiding us into the rituals of prayer in the family, which is critical. Yes. You see, do you bless your children before they leave home? You know, my sister, before a child has left, she would bless them. Mm -hmm. Because you have to remind the child that they're there for God. Um, do you pray together on mornings or on evenings? Do you go to Mass together as a family? Do you prepare for Mass by reading the Gospel on the Sunday before you go to Mass? So on the Saturday evening, you read the, the, the text so that when you go to Mass, you've already listened to the Gospel before. Is there a night ritual of prayer, prayer in your family? These rituals tell children who is ultimately important. It's not them. It's not you. It's God who is first. If you're going to get children to get the fact that God is first, we have to live in a way that points to God being first and ritual is the way that we make that happen most easily. The next is right of reaching out. You know, exploring the service to others is what we spoke about in last, last week. Yeah. And so we don't have to do a lot on it, but it's so important for families to reach out to other families and for families to live by doing, doing the reaching out and, and giving service to others. And to involve the children in that is so vital if the children are going to grow up with a giving heart. Now, we reach down, we, we're at the end of the show already. What's your key message? Well, rituals are important for containing the big moments in life. They inform us about what is truly important to all of us. And, and without them, we, we, we just have to spend too much energy to hold the whole together. Action step then. Review the rituals in your family. Strengthen those that are not working. Adopt new ones that are needed and abandon those that are not life-giving. Wow, that's a lot. Review the rituals in your family. Everybody listen to Archbishop. Strengthen those that are not working. Adopt new ones that are needed and abandon those that are not life-giving. And he mentioned this, he mentioned today, take baby steps. Take baby steps. Yeah, yeah. Don't try to do it all in one. I would say make a list in um, three things on your, on, your, on your column. What are the ones we want to strengthen? I will start there. What's the ones we want to discard? I'll go there next. And what's the new ones that we want to introduce? And those I will do slowly, slowly, slowly. When you strengthen the ones you're strengthening, then introduce some new ones slowly. Scripture reading. Well, that is Luke 21, Luke 2, 41 to 42. Each year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to the festival custom. And I wanted to see, show you that the Holy Family had rituals. Each year, the parents went. So 
each year the family went. And when he was 12, they went up according to the festival custom. So there was a custom, a cultural custom uh, from, from Israel, from the, from the people of God. There's a family custom. And between these two, the, the, the Holy Family lived. And I wanted to give a concrete example that, that what I'm talking about, rites and rituals, is something that the Holy Family celebrated. Amen. Archbishop Ji, end with a prayer and, you know, so that we can all meditate on what you shared with us today, knowing your rights. Father, we thank you for your incredible love for us. You made us as human beings to live with our rights and to develop rights that are holy, healthy, and life-giving. We pray that you give us eyes to see the rights that we are we have right now as families and see whether they are adequate for our times or not. And give us courage, Lord, to renew our rights. Give us courage to even bring new ones in, but courage to do what is required to hold the whole family together so that each member knows their place and knows you as our God. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.